Like everyone needs something. We all have a need right now. We all have a want and we all have different skills and magic. The problem is we all try to be everyone else. So I try to say, oh, I've got the best reach on my podcast. Well, I've got, I mean, I've released like five episodes on my podcast. It's brand new. Yeah. My guest, John Lee Dumas. I mean, I launched a podcast, a second podcast, because I thought, why not? First episode of my second podcast, a two hour podcast with Hal Elrod. Yep. So it's, you know, I didn't go and I didn't say, I've got the best reach. I've got the best audience. I went and found what my magic was. And I found what I needed, which is I needed the guests. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. All right, Gary, we're rolling. How you doing, my man? It's good to doing see you. Doing good, guys. Good to see you as well. <laughs> this is the first time we're seeing you in motion. Usually mm-hmm. it's like some still shot with the same headset, I think, on Clubhouse. It <laughs> is the same headset. It's a slightly <laughs> different angle. My wife's in that seat today. She's sitting literally right across the computer from me. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's odd to have video now after I, I've done so much <laughs> audio only on Clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the picture on Clubhouse and I, and I assumed you were like a pilot because it looks like a, a pilot's headset. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone did. This is so... Lewis Howes, this is a headset that Lewis used. Uh, we all grabbed it. Everyone on the team grabbed the same headset when we worked with Lewis. And it, I live in an apartment. So I'm on the fourth floor here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And they were literally jackhammering the fifth floor, like Thank busting you. up the tile. I couldn't concentrate. And I was doing podcasts and doing client calls and nobody could hear it Whoa. because this mic is so good. It's, it's a bit annoying because it is a headset, but the mic is insane. <laughs> what's the headset name? Like what's, what do you got? It's, a, it's an Audio Technica headset. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was like 200 bucks on Amazon. So it wasn't like, it's not that this was thousands of dollars. It's just going through like one of the Scarlet's, the little focus rights. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. So nothing but like, I mean, jackhammers and you can't hear anything. Wow. Which <laughs> yeah, is perfect it sounds when great you live though. in the city. It's got a great yeah. microphone on it. Yeah, man. Well, dude, I mean, we, when we met, I, don't, I forget exactly how we got connected, but it was through Clubhouse and we we're, I don't know, we were hopping in rooms, moderating together. I mean, well, that's the beauty of Clubhouse. I think it was that, were you in the room where um, I think Tyrese Gibson popped in and was sharing his stories about Jeff Bezos and stuff? Yeah. I think that was, because that I think was the very first time Joe and I had ever done a live Clubhouse was <laughs> we got on Clubhouse. Um, I think it was me, Joe, Brad Costanzo, Sean Vossler, and a few other people kind of started off a room about uh how to connect with influencers right Mm -hmm. right and we we started off that room we'd never done a clubhouse and somehow tyrese stumbled upon it came in the room next thing we know there's 700 people in the room listening to us and this is our first time going live on clubhouse (laughs) (laughs) what is this thing (laughs) where have you been my whole life (laughs) it's it's wild you know it is one of the wildest platforms the wildest algorithms that i've ever experienced in my life so you know, I, I don't, I don't even know how yeah. to, yeah, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, you know, there's, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason when you get a room that has a hundred people in it or 5,000 people in it. It's, there's not a true way to you know, like hack the algorithm. I've been running a room today for a friend of mine. He had a four hour meeting. He said, would you run the room for me while I'm gone? And I was like, okay, we kept it at about 1.4 K the entire day. I have some stats that I'm running behind the scenes in these clubhouse rooms. And it's fascinating because this room today, and I don't know, we ran for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, about six hours. And we had about 45,000 people go through the room. Jeez. Now we never got above 1900 at any concurrent time. So 1900 was our max listeners, which is what you see when you're looking at clubhouse. It tells you how many people's in the room. Mm -hmm. You were just talking about 700. We never got above like 1954 or something like that. But we have it. We had over forty-five thousand people go in and out of the room. The average person stuck and listened for twelve minutes. Wow! So that tells that you number, that, that um, there's a. It's a piece of software called Direcon. D I R E C O N. Okay. It's it's brand new. There's about two hundred people using it. It's five fifty dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And what you do is when you go into the room and you're a mod, so you have a little green bean. You get to moderate the room. You grab the URL and you put it in your desktop in the Direcon dashboard. And when you put it in the dashboard and I don't know, do you guys screen share here? You can, if you want. Oh, I don't know. For the audio, it might not be the best. Yeah. I mean, I think most people listen on audio. So (laughs) yeah, well, I'll show you and I'll talk through it really quickly just so, because I do know you're doing a little bit of video, Mm -hmm. but it ends up looking just like this. So it tells you how many average time listen for your room, your stickiness for the room, how many speakers came in and out of the room, 
<laughs> the total number of listeners, the max number of listeners, the duration of time this room that I'm talking about has been running for seven hours and one minute. Max number of listeners is 12 or 1,962. We've had 44,005 total listeners come through the room. We've had a total listen time of 10,321 hours and 40 minutes. Jeez. And this is, this is just today. The average person listened for 14 minutes. Stickiness was 3.32%. Obviously, this room's been going for hours. Not many people can stick around for hours. Mm. And then when it's done, it will tell us how many speakers came on stage. Wow. wow. So, That's and then cool. beyond that, they're actually building a database of your entire listening audience and telling you who your most popular listeners are. Ooh, so I can wow. see like this person, Joe, he's listened in six of my rooms and he's listened for 10 hours and 22 minutes in rooms where I've been on stage. So, so those is, are your followers. And so no, you know these it. are just people in the room, just oh, in just the audience okay. listening. Got and it. it's tracking every person that's in a room when I'm on stage as a speaker, not necessarily using my share of voice, mm. but just physically having the microphone privileges to be able to speak. And it's tracking that this person, Joe, has been in six of the rooms where I've had the privilege to speak. And he's actually stayed in the audience or been in that room, whether he's been on stage or in the audience or any capacity for 10 hours and 22 minutes listening to me wow. or listening to rooms that I've been listening to, too. So now I know that this person, Joe, would be an amazing person to probably reach out to. He probably has a lot of the same thoughts that I have. He's probably engaging in the same types of conversations. He may be an ideal client. I may be an ideal client of his. I can go look at who's he engaging with on Instagram. I could do one-off market research. So all of this cool stuff on one piece of software that's $50 a month. Dude. That's the first time we've heard of that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I know sure. you I know you all like to get into some some tactical stuff and some some in the weeds and stuff like yeah. that. So you know, That's it's, awesome. it's fun to talk about that stuff sometimes. Well, let's, I, I do want to talk about Clubhouse and I want to talk about connecting with influencers and launches and all of the stuff that's your specialty. But I also want to kind of go back a little bit and, and let your audience hear your story a little bit. So, you know, you, you've you worked with guys like Lewis Howes and Gabby Bernstein and Michael Hyatt and just some really, really big name uh, in, in our industry, some big name influencers in the, the sort of marketing world. How did you get into this? How You know, wh where'd you start? It's It's kind of funny. So... I had an agency that I was running in 2009, 10, 11, and 12. And I wanted to be on stage at this event called Blue Glass. Mm -hmm. And it was ran by Lauren Baker, which Lauren's one of the founders of Search Engine Journal, mm -hmm. Greg Bozer, and Chris Winfield, which Chris and his fiance now, Jen, own Super Connector Media. Mm -hmm. So I went to Blue Glass. I was like, man, this is an awesome event. It's epic. And I went. And I, I went and I was an attendee and then I applied to speak. And then I went to the second one as an attendee and I applied to speak. So then I said, well, I'm just going to go create my own. So I did. <laughs> I created my own event called ID 2013. I ran it in 2013. We ran it in South Beach and I just went all out. I spent about 120 grand in two days. I had attendees in the audience like Community Coffee, Kohler, all these big corporate brands. My speakers were people like Rand Fishkin, Peter Shankman, Michael King. Mm -hmm. Blue Glass happened to fold during that time. So Lauren Baker and Greg Bozer came to my event to speak on my stage. <laughs> they did a tell-all about the fold of Blue Glass and what went wrong as they were partners in the company and how they expanded too quickly and then collapsed. So it was an epic event. Mm -hmm. And I got invited to some big, big stages at that point in time and big opportunities. I got invited to come in and pitch NBC Universal, Community Coffee, and Dollywood. And I was shortlisted or won all three of those accounts. And I subsequently lost all three of those accounts because I was running about a 10-man team. Mm. And they would not hand the $250 million digital budget from Community Coffee mm. to a little 10-man team in South Carolina. Every single one of those companies offered to hire me. And I wouldn't take a job. So that happened. And I, I started to experience that. And then I had one client that represented about 30% of my income. And every year, come January, it was a hotel chain. Mm -hmm. And they would look at me. And we had some discrepancies in our billing. They wouldn't pay a couple invoices throughout the year. And we would go to reconcile everything. And they would say, well, I'd say, well, you owe me 20 grand. And they would say, well, you got a choice. We're going to either pay you the 30 grand we're paying you this month. Or we're, we're going to pay you the 20 grand that we owe you from last year. But we're going to cancel our contract. Hmm. And I was held hostage and I said, I'm done. So I hired, well, I, I didn't hire. I actually take this back. I, I entered into a relationship with a business coach. Her name was Suzanne Evans. 
she taught me a super valuable lesson and she said I needed a package. I didn't have one. I didn't know I needed one. So I read the book by Blair Inns that said that the world doesn't need another generalized um, design firm. What the world needs is a specialist. So I read that book or I read a paragraph or two out of that book. I built a package. And then she said, and by the way, I need traffic. Okay, I can do traffic. So I started doing traffic for influencers. And I had a couple clients out of Suzanne Evans' world. She coaches, you know, she's, I think, five times, Inc. 500, 5,000 award winner, New York Times bestselling author. She runs a great business. She's based in Cary, North Carolina, Chapel Hill. But I, I, went, I flew out to Steve Olsher's event, yeah. Internet yeah, Profits Live. And I spoke oh, oh, at, okay. oh, Internet Pro, this is way back in the day. It's like yeah, 14, yeah. 15. Internet Profits Live, I spoke with Lewis House. And Lewis had his, his partner or his, his friend or his roommate, Caesar, with him. And it was Matt's first month in the company. And I looked at Lewis and I met Lewis. He was introduced through Mastin Kip. I met Lewis and I, I said, you know, you got a choice, man. You can either invest a year of your time and energy in training the agency you just hired, or you can fire them and hire me. And we hugged it out. We did not work together. And about a month later, I got a call and said, hey, we'd like to work with you. Yeah. And I learned that if I could get myself in the right room, I, I knew what I was doing. I understood it. I could, I could build the relationships. So a couple of months later, I got the call to, to get on the phone with Evan Pagan. Mm. So I got on the phone with Evan, and he was selling the first MetaMind. Mm. I paid my 3K, and I went to MetaMind. And at that event, I met Jeff Walker. And I said, Jeff, you can either pay someone to learn how to do it, or you can hire me. And I ended up joining Jeff's Mastermind, and, you know, and, and it just dominoes from there. But every chance, it was basically I would get an opportunity – I would deliver on exactly what I said I would deliver on. And then they would introduce me to someone else. Mm -hmm. And then I would deliver on exactly what I said I would deliver on. And then they would introduce me to someone else. You know, so much so that, I mean, whenever, like, we did a book for one of my clients back in 2016, and the CEO of Hay House, Reed Tracy, calls me. And he's like, Gary, how'd you do this? We hit number nine of all books on Amazon six months before we published on a wow. book about aromatherapy. <laughs> I love it. And I didn't have a trick. All I did was I had an audience of people waiting to buy a book about aromatherapy. Mm. So that's it. So I, I don't have marketing tricks. I'm not the sexiest marketer in the world. I don't have all these black hat ninja tricks. I just know how to align an audience with an offer and get people to do what we need them to do. Yeah. Well, it sounds like on the, the sort of influencer front, like, you know, one of the questions, one of the rabbit holes we wanted to go down was, you know, how do we connect with influencers and, you know, get on their radar? But it, it sounds like your story was the answer to that question. Just get in the room with them, you know, invest, get to know the people you need to get to know and just be in the room. It sounds like everybody needs something like everyone needs something. We all have a need right now. We all have a want and we all have different skills and magic. The problem is we all try to be everyone else. So I try to say, oh, I've got the best reach on my podcast. Well, I've got, I mean, I've released like five episodes on my podcast. It's brand new. Yeah. My guest, John Lee Dumas. I mean, I launched a podcast, a second podcast, because I thought, why not? <laughs> First episode of my second podcast, a two-hour podcast with Hal Elrod. Yep. So it's, you know, I didn't go and I didn't say, I've got the best reach. I've got the best audience. I went and found what my magic was. And I found what I needed, which is I needed the guests. Yep. So when you find your unique magic and you, you start to, to look and say, how can I help and how can I support and how can I build up? Before you know it, they want to come and help and support and build you up too. Yeah. And if they don't, someone else will. And it'll be okay because I totally believe the energy we throw out into the world is the energy that we get back from someone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the same person we're serving and building up. You know, Maybe they needed to be built up and somebody else will come build us up later. Yeah. I love this journey because it's something that everyone can do. You don't need to be a paid traffic ninja or hire some agency to do this stuff for you. You literally get in the room. And this is a similar story to Matt and I mm -hmm. starting off in our industry and what started my company, your company separate at the time is get in the room, go to every conference possible. And uh, sometimes we didn't even pay for it. We just hang out in the bar. But our goal is like, at least the one I always had in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to make at least break even from this trip in my time out there. And like you said, you deliver. And then, yeah, and then you just rinse and repeat, you get the referral network going. And then it's not magic. I mean, it's just you do the work and be consistent with it. Yeah, and you listen to people. You know, when I got Peter Shankman to come and speak. So Peter Shankman founded Hayro, mm -hmm. Help a reporter out. Big, mm -hmm. big company. This was back in the day. So this was 2013 when Peter Shankman was Hayro. Mm -hmm. This isn't Peter Shankman today in 2021. This is Peter Shankman 2013. He had a baby. 
I got him to come and speak at my event. He's the only speaker I paid. And I only paid him five grand because he had a baby. Mm -hmm. But I found what he wanted. He had never been on stage with Rand Fishkin, uh-huh. ever. He wanted to be on stage with Rand Fishkin. Rand was my first speaker to say yes. Perfect. So when Rand said yes, my second speaker, I knew because I knew I wanted Peter. So I had watched Peter's tweets. I had read, I had Google alerts on Peter's name. I knew what Peter was asking. I knew the questions he was typing into the search engines because I knew where he would land or if he would go to, you know, Cora or whatever was out at that point in time, or if he was tweeting a certain question, you know, one of Peter's famous stories is Morton showing up at the airport with a steak for him because he tweeted, he'd like to have a steak. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, right. Super cool story. Well, I went and I went to Peter and I said, Peter, I know you have a child coming. I'm having this event and I have an amazing opportunity for you. Well, I didn't say I need you to come and speak. I said, I have an opportunity for you. Well, what's my opportunity, Gary? I can put you on stage with Rand Fishkin and I'll give you the open mic to talk about the future of social media. I'll share that video with you one day. It's insane. Please. But Peter said, yes. And then he said, but, but I got a kid and, and we figured out the math and all this stuff. It worked. And he flew in, he did his event and he flew right back out. Mm-hmm. But I found what he wanted. I didn't make it about me. I made it about Peter. Mm-hmm. How do I set Peter up to be successful? Well, you know what happened on clubhouse one day? I wanted to run a room. So I, I got out to Peter and I said, Hey, Peter, you want to come into clubhouse and run a room? Sure. Gary, I'd love to. I brought Peter Shankman right back into clubhouse, the new creator coins. I don't know if you guys have seen those, the rally coins, I've like Bomani has a coin. It's a, it's a new creator crypto coin on the Ethereum network. Oh huh, no, I haven't seen that yet. Uh-uh. Well, Peter Shankman has a creator coin. I wanted a creator coin. There's only 59 people right now that have one. I will have one next week. Wow, that's awesome. Because I went to Peter and I said, Peter, can you help me by putting me on the short list with the founders of the creator coin so I can get a creator coin? <laughs> I've kept that relationship intact for eight years because I've never needed to use it. Mm-hmm. And I made it about Peter. How can I help Peter? How can I help Peter? I have 50,000 followers ish on Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Peter doesn't. So what happens when I come in the room? I bring my following. I help Peter. So how do I help the, that person? So when you go to someone, any influencer you want to work with, you have to spend the time and energy to figure out what they want and what they need right now. Mm. And when you figure out what they want and what they need, and you're able to solve that problem, it doesn't have to be that you solved it. Literally for John Lee Dumas, I'm making connections to people that he needs to meet. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing, he doesn't, I mean, my podcast isn't going to help John Lee Dumas out that much. I mean, I'm on like episode five. You know how many downloads episode five gets of the podcast. Oh, yeah, like two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I, I think I did network, pretty man. good. I got like 160. Um, so I consider that pretty good for episode five. It's great. <laughs> but still, like I got a 33-minute interview with him. And on top of that, he said, Gary, the audio is so good. Do you mind if I re-release it on my podcast? Mm, so he released it as a bonus episode on his podcast. Because I showed up ready to serve and feature him as the expert. Mm -hmm. Because I knew what he needed. I knew he needed to sell books. So when you're, when you don't know their need, or let's, let's say you, you have a connection for eight years or so, Mm -hmm. how do you keep that connection or how do you keep yourself top of mind? And like, do you have, and obviously you're always listening, I'm imagining, uh, but are there like, are you texting? I mean, obviously there's a million ways to do this and clubhouse is probably a lot easier now. How do you stay top of mind? It's remembering one thing. So do you know the name Derek Halpern mm-hmm. from Social Triggers? Definitely. You know Derek? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have a story about Derek. Derek. Derek taught me a very valuable lesson one day. He taught me how to do an introduction. And I've, I've kept this lesson with me forever and ever. I was actually teaching this lesson in a room. I launched a room on Clubhouse the other day and I had about 75 people in the room. And it was, who do I need to meet? That was the title of the room. Mm. Derek's in the audience. I didn't think anybody could hear my voice because couple like random people start popping on stage, random people start leaving. I brought someone up just to see if they could hear me. And then I start telling the story about Derek. And what he did is one day I made an introduction to Derek and I thought I was doing the best thing in the world. I thought it was going to be the perfect introduction between Derek and this person. And Derek honored the introduction because he honored me. And he taught me that you never, ever, ever make a blind introduction to someone because you don't know where that person's at. You don't know if they're available. You don't know the relationship. You don't know their past history. I start telling the story. Derek raises his hand. I haven't talked to Derek in seven years, Hmm. six years. Derek comes on stage. He's like, Gary, I didn't even remember that story. I do now, but I didn't remember it. 
Derek and I talk for 20 minutes on a clubhouse stage with 70 people in the audience. I didn't need to keep my relationship intact with him. Right. But I never burned the bridge. I just let it kind of fizzle out and die out. So I left it in a good spot and I didn't bother. And a lot of times we try to keep it intact when we don't need to. Mm -hmm. If there's not a re like a reason to talk to me, like if we're good friends, like cool, it makes sense. Like my friend Joshua B. Lee, yeah. I've been checking on him. He's had some stuff going on with his family and his, you know, they had the storm down there. I've been checking on him. He's my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, I checked on how Elrod, he wasn't in Austin when the storm came. How's my friend? But I'm not checking on everyone all the time. They're not my friends. They're just my associates. They're my colleagues. A lot of times we get like, I had to learn it the hard way being behind the scenes. My clients, I thought they were my friends. Nope. Mm -hmm. I was their vendor. Mm -hmm. I thought they were my friends. I was their vendor. And that's okay. I learned that. And when we learn that, when we learn our place in the relationship, then we know we don't have to keep it intact, mm -hmm. but we don't, we have to leave it at a great spot. Now, I'll tell you, if you take and you want to build a relationship with someone and you know, like, for example, let's say that you wanted to build a relationship with Hal Elrod, go see who Hal follows on Instagram. Go see how many people in his circle you can start building a relationship with. Eventually, you'll get a relationship with Hal. Mm -hmm. Proximity, right? Yeah. You're just getting closer. Like there's social proximity just the same way as there's real life proximity. Yeah. Going and joining the mastermind, going to the live event, going and getting at the right room at the right time. There's social proximity too. Yeah. Showing up and commenting on their posts, you know, just, just every so often going and reading, but it's really remembering one key point, one key story that you can tell. And then you work that into your life. Mm -hmm. I can tell that story about Der Derek Halpern every day for the rest of my life. It's so valuable. I almost forget it sometimes. And sometimes I do and I mess up and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I messed up. I did the Down wrong there. thing. Yeah. But I tell it because I don't want people to do that to me either. Because I had never been popular like this until Clubhouse came around. <laughs> and then I started to get those. I started to get those blind introductions. And I had so much stuff flying at me 14 ways that I couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I finally get what it's like to be popular. Mm -hmm. I've never had that. Like, I've never had, you know, I mean, I've got, I'm one of the first 50 accounts on Instagram to get Instagram bots. Oh, really? Yeah, out of the whole platform. There's only 50 accounts that got them. I was one of the first 50. My Instagram DMs are insane. They've never been insane. I've had access to some of the biggest accounts in the influencer space on Instagram. My DMs blow theirs away. Wow. They are insane. <laughs> so how are you? Because this is something that personally I do struggle with. I have, I'm, I'm in a better place with it, but like, because I, I do a lot more of the face, the interactions of the two of us. But I mean, like you you get a ton of this too. But how do you keep up with all the multiple inboxes you have, you know, Instagram, I know Twitter's one, email, you know, and the cold outreaches, people you have. Do you have a way to kind of manage all that and keep, keep yourself sane at the same time? For the most part, in all honesty, you pay to play. Yeah. And I know that sounds a little weird, but when you pay, I pay attention. Mm -hmm. So right now, the way my bot is set up, when you send me any message, when you tag me in any story. So if you added me to your Instagram story right now, my bot would send you a message automatically and say, thank you. If you commented on any of my Instagram posts, my bot would send you a message right now and say, thank you. If you sent me a message on Instagram right now, my bot would send you a message and say, thank you. And then when you replied, it would invite you to go to Gary.club mm -hmm. and it would invite you to go put in your email, which gives you opportunities to pay if you choose. Well, as you start to ascend through that pipeline, one of the reasons why I'm getting a creator coin is so you can actually make small investments in my brand. Well, you may not want to go spend 500 or 15,000 or whatever those numbers are, but maybe you do want to send me a couple coins and say, here, thanks, Gary. We really appreciated you. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Patreon or kind of like the Facebook supporter program or yep. kind of like OnlyFans, but for Gary, <laughs> you know, I'm not really, I'm not really OnlyFans material. <laughs> <laughs> some people, maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe there are some weird people There's out there. an here. audience. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. And. That's how I can't keep up with them. And that's why the bots were so important to me because my flow of messaging is insane. Yeah. And I needed to get something back to people quickly. And then from there, if they want my attention, then there's some pathways to get there. Mm. They can upgrade to VIP access. They can buy some coaching. They can buy some time. They can invest in a creator coin that I have. Yeah. Or they can just show up and keep commenting, just keep coming to my rooms, keep showing up in the audience, keep raising their hands. And eventually they'll build the relationship that way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And that's, I mean, I know originally we built a relationship because we shared the room, but we started mm -hmm. and we brought you on as a mod. I, I forget exactly mm -hmm. what it was, but yeah, I mean, there's, cause I, that's what I've noticed is with clubhouse, you know, the more you're on stage or speaking, your Instagram is going to blow up, you know, if you assuming you're speaking, giving good value and you have a great profile, but it's like, you, you can't neglect that inbox as well, because that's an extension of, you know, what you're doing. Obviously you can, yeah. I was going to say you can, if you do it right. So right now everyone can put some FAQs in their Instagram. So there's a way you can put four quick buttons that someone can click a, a button. There's four choices. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And then when someone goes to message you, they can choose one of these four options, which makes it somewhat easier, right? Because yeah. now you're narrowing their, their choices a little bit. And most people, in all honesty, will just click the button because they don't want to type. They want it to be easy too. Well, my button says, would you like to get the free clubhouse guide? Mm. Well, the button says, can I have your free clubhouse guide, Gary? Well, cool. They hit that button. It sends me that message. This was before I had the bot. Mm. Instagram also has something called saved replies. Well, my saved reply said, most definitely, I would love to send you that. <laughs> and by the way, you can go do this dismiss and gave them a couple more steps. So yes, I did have to physically reply, but now I got 80% of the people typing the same message to me and 80% of the people got the one click reply back. And right. then I got the bots in place and now it's automated and that's, that's it. Freaking awesome. And I yeah. tell them, but I gave them the invitation. If you want more direct access to Gary, go here. So I told them very clearly, you don't get direct access to Gary on Instagram. Yeah, That's, that's not where I'm not serving you. Like someone said the other day, they said, so if I want access, I got to wire you this much money. I said, no, I'll give you free coaching all day long on Clubhouse mm -hmm. in front of a live audience. I'm not giving you free coaching in my DMs. Mm. And that's, that's what they're good, wanting. That's a good distinction because mm -hmm. we talked about it. And we're like, you know, does this and we we're just chatting about it. it was like, does it devalue someone's brand? Like a, a, a let's say a, you know, a, a, a oh, Jesus, my brain, brain is misfiring, but um, yeah, any influencer that's on there, John Asraf is a buddy of ours and he was in mastermind the other day and he's like on there all the time. And some people are like, Oh, well, why would I join his mastermind if I could just get him all the time here? But to your point, you're, you're totally right. It's free. That's, that's just the entry way right there. It's, it's the land grab. It's it's the attention, you know, uh, thing, catalyst that then pushes them down the pipe there. You pay for access. Mm. And when you're giving away a lot for free, when you have a big, and I've never had this, I've had it for my clients. I've never had it personally. You know, I made two and a half million dollars off of 27 clients mm. in annual revenue. That was consulting revenue. So mm. I didn't need thousands of clients to go make two and a half million. I needed 27 of them. Yeah. It's really easy to find 27 people to pay you the kind of money like that's not that hard knowing what I know, knowing what sure. you know and sure. knowing what our listeners know here, but it's really hard to go get 10,000 people to pay you $500. Yep. That's really difficult. So I had to figure out that differently. So when you flip the model and you start serving for free and you monetize at a lower price point, then the expectation for that access goes up. Mm -hmm. So now people I'm getting, so in January, I ran a test. So we're recording this in February. I have no clue when you'll publish this live. But in January of 2021, I ran a test. I had four people pay in full for an annual program that's north of $10,000 without ever, ever getting on the phone with me. And I met them on Clubhouse. I love it. Man. All they did was hear me talk, hear me coach, hear, hear my voice, follow me around at their own pace. I was serving a lot. I was in there. And then I would get messages that would say, client, how do I invest? Mm. I'd write them back and I'd say, 500 or 15,000. I'll take the 15,000. Where do I send the money? Boom. Four people and I ran a test. That's it. I just wanted to run a test and say, if I do this, will I get this result? If then, mm -hmm. because I got a book to write. I'm writing a 44,000 word book and I've got a manuscript due in two months. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of work to do. I just needed to run a test. Mm -hmm. So a I ran a test. Study. Yeah, I ran a test. It worked. Now I know I can start to grow it back slowly. I'm not going to go in at the same rate I was going in because I have a different goal today. Mm. And I think that's a big problem that a lot of people have is they set multiple expectations and you can't serve two masters. Right. You know, when you go into these clubhouse rooms or when you're on Instagram or you have your podcast, or your newsletter, or whatever you have, what's my goal for this? Mm -hmm. What's my expectation? And if I set the right expectation, I can go get that result, but I can't get everything. That's a big, that's a big distinction. Cause on clubhouse. Yeah. People just, uh, you know, I know for us, our perception are like, Oh my God, Gary's like always on here, but obviously there's a plan that you have these bumpers, you know, you have an agenda there. 
Um, and, and there's a good reason why you're on there, but you can't do it all. You know, you can't be a master podcast or all these things and expect to always live on clubhouse. Right. And I see a lot of people stressing out, like I gotta be at clubhouse or I gotta be there all the time. <laughs> FOMO. You know, we had that for a little bit back in December when we popped in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, I think, perfect timing for a lot of folks to hear who are just getting into clubhouse because we're hearing a lot of folks just kind of spread thin and almost anxious because they're going to miss out on something. Mm -hmm. I got to be and in there. You're not, you know, we're talking 10 million, 10 million users. Like, let's just be real. We, we talked about, you know, and John Lee Dumas is quite public with this. He gets, I have no clue how many you guys get, but he gets 1.4 million downloads per month on his podcast. Mm -hmm. He's pretty Not public about all of his yet. numbers. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's pretty public on all of his numbers. You know, he's, he's one of the most transparent people that I know. He gets a, over a tenth of the entire user base of Clubhouse downloading his podcast every single month. It, you could get on Clubhouse five years from now and not miss the boat. Right. There are people today that are getting on YouTube. They're not missing the boat. Mm -hmm. the, the lady, and I, I forget her name, but she read the poem at the presidential inauguration. Yeah. And she grew to so many million, I mean, what, uh, 2 million followers or something on Instagram. Like that. Yeah. She didn't miss the boat. <laughs> she got 2 million followers. There's people today right now that have, I mean, Lewis House has a hell of a podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has 2 million followers on Instagram like that. He mm -hmm. definitely didn't get them that same day like she did. There's plenty of opportunity when you become relevant. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're just trying to get in and get vanity metrics and say, I want to get them quick and easy and cheap, and then sure, maybe, you know, I miss the opportunity. Bomani, the mm -hmm. icon, he's at 3.1 million. Jeez. Like he hit the opportunity <laughs> on, the, on the head. Yeah. Swan Sit, I think she's topping 2 million. She hit the opportunity on the head. She's the former VP of digital for Nike. Ooh. All right. So she hit the opportunity on the head. So some people like that, John Lee, my friend that's on stage with me a lot, he's at 240,000 followers. Mm -hmm. He came on the same day as me. He's at 240,000. I'm at 47.4. He grew a lot faster than me. He also has 5 million followers on social media. I don't have close to that. Right. I have like 2,300 on Instagram whenever I started. Now I've I got mean, you're 15. a perfect case study of yeah. literally everything started right. I mean, not everything, but you know, you got in the room, which back to your point, you got in the room at Clubhouse. But not only you got in the room, you show up in the room, you speak at the room, you start the rooms. Are you usually the one creating the rooms or are you a no. mod that pops in? I very rarely create my own rooms hmm. because my goal right now is audience. And when you create your own rooms, you got to pull everybody together and you got to, mm -hmm. you got to play politics. I just go to rooms mm -hmm. and just, just go and serve. Yeah. And that's what I did. I, I live in Puerto Rico. My time zone was my advantage. Mm -hmm. So I went into this room on how to run a million dollar business. I think was what the, what it was called. And I went in and started serving in that room. Well, the founders of that room, they were from California, the West Coast, mm -hmm. somewhere out there, West Coast somewhere. Well, they would want to go to bed. Well, right now, you know what time it is where you are. It's 2.40 p.m. where I am. It is 10.40 a.m. on the West Coast because yep. we're four hours apart right now. So they would want to go to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning. I wake up and I'm ready to work at 5 a.m. my time. Mm. They go to bed. I wake up and serve. John Lee, 5 a.m. my time was 9 a.m. in London. John Lee lives in London. John Lee and I were there ready to serve. 5 a.m. my time, 9 a.m. his time. We're going hard. Everybody else is sleeping. And then everybody, so now we start to build a reputation. Then people start to go spread out and do their own things, yeah. do their own things. Well, what happens? Well, Gary and John, Gary and John, Gary and John, you need me to help in your room. So all I did was I used what I had to my benefit. I know how to coach people. So I, I'm, I'm respectable on a stage and I wake up early hmm. and you want to go to bed and I'll just be there when you wake up. <laughs> and that's what I did. As soon as they came back, I said, John, John Lee, I was running his room today and he came back 15 minutes early. He sent me a message on WhatsApp. He's like, I'm back, Gary. I was like, everyone, John Lee is back. John Lee, I hope you had an amazing meeting and immediately handed him the microphone. <laughs> it's his room. I was there to run my role. But I'll tell you, running my role today, I've added over 1,100 followers on Clubhouse today alone just by That's serving my role. So did I get a benefit out of that? 100% I did. Did he nope. get a benefit? 100% he did. We all rose together. Hmm. What was that. my role? Like I went into the – what was the, the airline that went down? Air Malaysia, the airline that went down the mm – -hmm. yep. I was on stage, John Lee, the CEO of Air Malaysia, me. Whoa. 
We had 6,000 people in the room. I recorded the whole thing. I've, I didn't speak. I tried to speak, but my audio was all messed up and it didn't even sound right. <laughs> but I didn't speak. I was busy on client calls. I was there to, to help my buddy. My skill set at that moment was I have a roadcaster and I could record it for him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So what did I do? I used my skill set. That's what I have to help John Lee. What did John Lee do for me? He bought me Gary.club as a gift. I have no clue what he paid for it. That was a gift to me. So all we're doing is you're just helping each other out. And sure, there'll be money that'll exchange hands here and there. But more than that, there's relationships that exchange hands. I think that's what I like about Clubhouse. It's very, it's very, it feels natural and organic. You know, it's very serendipitous. But at the same time, you can collaborate with the people you do like and trust. And you know how to serve them. But you're collectively serving together. And then you know, the followers and whatever the algorithm is doing to match and really feel serendipitous more so than any other uh, social network out well, there. It also feels like it's a sort of great equalizer platform. You can be famous, get on Clubhouse and be starting from zero. You can be, a, you know, quote unquote, a nobody that people don't really know, but provide a ton of value on Clubhouse. And all of a sudden you skyrocket past the celebrities, right? So there's this like, equalizing level playing field that I love about Clubhouse. And I think the fact that you can't see each other on video is a big factor in that as well. What you can't, you can't have your team do it. That's the hard part. Mm. So, you know, if, if we were doing this podcast interview and if anyone's listening, you can tell this isn't scripted, mm -hmm. but a lot of podcasts are, especially when you get into big names. They require you to send the, the questions ahead of time. They have to figure out, you know, what can we talk about? What can't we talk about? You hear their responses. They sound like mini keynotes mm -hmm. because they're canned. Even though they, you may have sporadically asked them this question out of order, it's still their canned response. Sure. Clubhouse, you don't know what's happening. Yeah. You don't know what's getting thrown at you, and you can't give a canned response. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible, especially if you're there for any duration of time. So you could come in for five or 10 minutes, give a couple of canned responses and leave. But the people that are spending any duration of time, they're like, I wasn't a Grant Cardone fan. I am now hmm. strictly because of Clubhouse. Ty yeah. Lopez, I definitely wasn't a Ty Lopez fan. I, agree I am now. Those front. Yeah. 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 I am now because Ty is smart. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that because that's not the perception they played on social media. Because when we get on social media, our team tells us, look like this, film this, put the captions this way, mm. record the audio this way, do your YouTube video this way, post this. Most of these people don't even have a clue what's been posted on their social media. That's mm -hmm. true. They're just doing, and they're like, oh, I got 10,000 followers today. Wow, good job, team. Yay. Yep. Well, did you like that motivational quote? What did we talk about? Well, it's because it can all be faked or phoned in. You can't phone in Clubhouse. Yeah. Not I think Instagram is, is phoned in the most, you know, it and is. that's where I know that, that honestly for a while, I think it was Instagram that kind of made me just like screw social media, man. Like this doesn't feel like, doesn't feel like a connection anymore. Mm -hmm. And I know that was the whole point. And then bam, clubhouse came around. I was like, Oh shit, this is cool. It's different. Yep. It takes a lot of time if you let it take a lot of time of your day. But at the end of the day, man, I mean, there's so many ways to uh, benefit from it or, or benefit others, you know, by giving value. And you can almost like practice the muscle. That's what we found. It's like, it's a, it's an amazing testing ground to maybe lob an idea out there. Maybe it's a new webinar or just a speech that you're going to give. And maybe you work out the kinks, get feedback, work out the butterflies. If you're nervous about the topic or whatever, have you found similar things there? Oh, 100%. I test everything there. I, I learned the other day that this is, I guess you have mostly a U.S. audience. So I can say this. I test all your bits there. If you have a UK audience, evidently you're not supposed to test your bits. <laughs> um, that's not proper in the UK, I've been told. But um, in the US world, we test our bits there. And that's yeah. what you should be doing. Yeah. What you should do is you should use Clubhouse as your prime testing ground. Mm -hmm. At any given point in time, you can get an audience of a couple hundred people live that will engage with you every single moment. Yeah. So what you do is you go to Clubhouse and you test and you test and you practice and you practice and you practice your lines and you, you bring people on stage. Give me your question. Give me your question. What are you doing? You're writing down every single question. What are you going to do with every question they ask you? Go produce a YouTube video. Go produce a Facebook video. Go produce Instagram posts. Go produce blog content because that's what your ideal clients want. Mm -hmm. And then go push ads to them. Set up your Instagram remarketing pixel. Push all of your clubhouse people over to Instagram. What happens then? Now you have a Facebook audience right there, right? Yep. We got a Facebook audience, trigger a lookalike audience. Now you've got 2.1 million people in the United States that look just like your clubhouse followers. Mm -hmm. 
damn. What do you serve them? You serve them the same damn thing that you just told a hundred people in Clubhouse, but now you go tell two million people that. Because you're using the power of impact, the power of social media to take what you're testing, those bits you just tested on Clubhouse to leverage them in a big, big way in YouTube, on your blog, on a podcast, on you know, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you go play. Yeah. Another thing that I've seen on Clubhouse that I think is really cool is you see these people going and practicing their pitches as well. So like th there's a lot of investors, a lot of people with a lot of money. And every once in a while, you'll see these rooms that say something like pitch us your idea, just like Shark Tank. One of us might buy mm. and people can go on there and actually practice their pitches. And most of the times I'm in those rooms, you don't really see them going and buying th these companies, but you see a lot of feedback, a lot of here's what I would tweak about your pitch. Here's what I would say differently. Here's how I would angle it differently. And I, th I think it's brilliant for people that are out there looking for investments as well. I've personally seen and know of $25 million in deals funded directly from Clubhouse. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I know clients of mine are in talks with big investors. Like one of my clients is in talks with Ty Lopez to invest in his company. Hmm. Because Ty's on a big grab right now. Oh, yeah. He's, he just got a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's on Clubhouse shopping. Mm -hmm. Ty is also supposedly creating a competitor Clubhouse. Mm. So he's on Clubhouse investigating, too. Is he on Spaces at Twitter? I'm just kidding. I don't, I, I, I don't know that answer. But if you go look at his story at this moment, whenever yeah. we're recording this, it's, he's talking about his competitor of Clubhouse. Interesting. Okay. So it's, it's interesting that people are seeing it. But, you know, everybody, Grant Cardone's there looking for opportunities. Yeah. I've seen Mr. Wonderful there. I've seen Barbara mm -hmm. Corcoran there. What are they doing? Kevin Harrington's there all the time. Damon John's on it almost every time I log on too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Looking for opportunities because what do they want? They want people. Deals. Yeah. They're looking for people. They're looking for people. Well, what's Clubhouse full of people? I've now hired my second person off of Clubhouse. Mm. I'm hiring people there. I'm hiring people that I, I get to hear them talk. I like the way they're, they're acting. They show up. They seem respectful. I go sit in the audience. I let them pitch me live on stage on why I should hire them. Literally, I was on stage today. Someone was talking. I liked what they said. I sent them a message. I said, would you be willing to be on my team? Huh. I said, I need 20 hours a week right now, but I want to consume your company and bring it full time in my company soon. They said, I don't want to run my company anymore. I'd love to do it. Mm. And we're starting next week on a test run uh -huh. at a small retainer of 20 hours a week to test their team out to see if I want to bring their team into my company. And if I do, I'll just jump in and grab their team. Yeah. And they will be part of my company. Their, their owner will become a team lead on my company mm. all from clubhouse you're absorbing that company as another arm of your business and they're yeah, it's, still they do the they do yeah. funnels and they do marketing design work i don't i need that for me personally and then my clients need that Man. who better to do than to just go grab a company that's already doing six or seven figures in that space for sure i wonder if roland's on there yeah <laughs> roland frazier i know yeah, he's he is. i know he's yeah. on there but i wonder if he's doing the, i'm sure he's doing the same strategy <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah he's in there trying to do some of that exact same stuff there's so many people there i mean we're talking 40 some thousand people that went through a room this morning Jesus. tell me where for free you could take six hours of your time today and stand in front of forty five thousand people yeah man that are your ideal people that chose to go in that room Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so good i mean that's the thing and i think you just have to you know if someone's not in clubhouse yet figure out a way to get on do you have any i mean i know you can get on the wait list get an invite from folks well, i mean it's if you if i'm your contact in my phone and you're my contact in your phone and you go and request your username it pops up a little notification if i've got the app open that'll let us in it's going to become public soon enough we're betting a lot on fall of this year mm, okay they said months before they have an Android, not a year. Mm. That was done in January. So I take months as maybe around October. Mm. I'm going to tell you, I don't think they're going to release an Android version until it's ready to go open more public. Now they may release the Android version like in a beta and mm. do it the same way they did the iPhone, but I don't think they're going to have the iPhone in beta and also have the Android in beta at the same time. I think the iPhone's going to open up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. They're I getting see. funding rounds left and right. So I, I think it's just a matter of time before it opens up very publicly and you know honestly you can go right now i think on ebay you can buy an invite for 29 bucks mm. <laughs> i had one of my friends he's in the franchise world and i told him i said go buy an apple device and he bought an ipad he spent 700 bucks he hated it uh -huh. and he's already done he's working a hundred million dollar deal off a of clubhouse right now <laughs> Doesn't that came anymore. into a pitch room <laughs> and he, he loves it now but it came into a pitch room they pitched they didn't get a deal 
he saw something in the opportunity and he knew he could connect the dots offline and he took it offline. And now he's in the middle of a hundred million dollar deal directly from clubhouse. Yeah. That's it. Show up. So even yeah, if you can't sure. get on stage, you can sit in the audience and just listen and just say, huh, Sally and George need to meet. Let's go connect Sally and George. I'm going to put myself in the middle of Sally and George. Mm -hmm. How can I put myself in the middle of Sally and George? Well, I heard Sally speak and I heard George speak. I'm going to introduce them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build a little one-on-one -on -one relationship and make an introduction. I'm going to plot myself right in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go do great things together. And they're going to remember that I'm the person who made that introduction for them. Think about starting all over again. That would be the approach. You literally need no skills other than showing up, listening, and figuring out a little creatively connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it reminds me of Jay Abraham, you know, like referral. I mean, he's just figuring out all these different ways to connect. I mean, you can literally exercise that muscle multiple times a day, every day, whenever you want. Yeah. I, I've literally connected with people on Clubhouse by just sitting in the room, not being on stage, listening, and then just going and hitting them up on DM on Instagram saying, hey, I heard you ask this question. The answer they gave was okay, but here's a really cool article that, that I think will take you even deeper on that answer. And just being of value in the DMs off of Clubhouse. And it's opened up conversations. I've gone back and forth. I've sent them the links to podcasts. Next thing you know, we're, we're growing in other areas outside of Clubhouse. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, running podcast rooms in Clubhouse is a great idea, too. Mm -hmm. So recording a podcast live in Clubhouse because you never know who's going to show up. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. So you run a little room and you put a topic around it like today we're going to talk about Facebook ads and you, you email a bunch of people and you say, stop by and I might bring you up. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you have a podcast episode with 10 guests that are all random that all come on stage. It's all recorded. It's all live. And it goes and it's released on a podcast. Well, we got ourselves a Roadcaster Pro right in front of us. So awesome. <laughs> we got everything we need to record. You know, just like the opportunities there because getting, you know, I've booked podcast guests from there. So like Myron Golden was one that I really wanted to talk to. I, I think Myron's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I think he's telling a case study right now. He did $500,000 in the first 30 days on Clubhouse wow. <laughs> and selling his high ticket product. But I, I, I met Myron on Clubhouse. I kept engaging with him. I, I stalked him. Every room he went in, I went in. Myron would talk. I would go right behind him. Man, that was great, Myron. Let me tell you this story. Man, that was great, Myron. And then I reached out and said, hey, Myron, would you be on my podcast? <laughs> sure, Gary. I'd love of to. Of course. <laughs> he never, ever once asked. And then like Dennis Yu. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very well. So Dennis Yu. Well, I asked Dennis. I was going to launch my podcast like two years ago. Ask him two years ago to be on it. And I got the, sorry, we're too busy. Yep. He went and found that email and replied to it when he saw me on clubhouse and said, Gary, now I think I should do this. Dennis is Michael Stelzner. Man. Yeah. Michael Stelzner from social media examiner. Same yeah. thing. I got mm -hmm. the thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. Heard me on clubhouse flipped around and said, when would you like me on your podcast? Yeah, buddy. Oh. Never once asked my listener metrics. Never once asked anything. My promotional plan never once did anything. Just heard me speak. So, you know, sometimes you just have to have the opportunities because I'll tell you, we did a hell of a lot of podcast outreach. About two years ago, and everyone said no because I was behind the scenes. Nobody yep. knew my name. Yep. Now that I have an equal playing field and I have a stage I can go speak on, like Clubhouse, which you can too or anyone can do, then you can start to have people hear your voice, which is what you truly want them to hear mm -hmm. because then they get to know you, they build a relationship with you, and the doors open up in a huge way. Yeah, man. It's a hell of a way to get on podcasts. That's for sure. You yeah. <laughs> Just get on Clubhouse and start connected, man. And imagine as <laughs> sitting in the audience, imagine like you guys have an amazing podcast here and you're, you. you're, you're cruising the audience, you're sitting in the audience and you're like, Ooh, I really like that person. Hmm. You actually have the listener stats. You have all the metrics. You have everything to actually be like when you ask somebody, they're like, yes, please. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, well, you get us, the, yes, kinda, you know, we have a lot, a lot of the buddies, all their friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of the common thing. They're like, Oh, well I got to join my crew. Cool. Mm -hmm. But, but you, you know, can it, like sit in the audience and just like pick your guests now. And you can say, seriously. I've been listening to this person. They bring something to the table that I didn't think of. I want to reach out to this person and say, hey, would you be willing to be on my podcast? They're not going to say no, because if they're on Clubhouse speaking, you know, they're looking for exposure. That's mm -hmm. right. Very good point. Uh, they're they're actually the actively to. looking for exposure because they're there spending their time and energy and effort speaking for free. So you mean I could get Elon? <laughs> no. Now, you, never you never know. <laughs> yeah, that you know, is true. I mean, he's but, on our list of our dream 100, so we're still shooting for it. Right? Well, you know, how could you get him? Well, he's going to at some point in time want to play a big game in Clubhouse. The mm -hmm. people who have big audiences in Clubhouse, are, they're going to get on stage. Yeah. I'm getting on stage with someone that 
is worth $4.5 billion. <laughs> and the way I'm getting on stage is because of my audience and my following. And I'm a co-mod doing the welcome party for someone worth $4.5 billion uh, because of my following, work. because of my relationship. So when you build that up, it opens the doors yeah. to brand partnerships. And, you know, just the same way as you would get, like with your podcast, you may have, you know, almost every author in this, in your vertical is going to come through your podcast mm -hmm. because you're going to sell books. You're going to help people sell books. That's what, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, as you grow a following on, on clubhouse, it's like, well, I need an audience myself. I don't want to be in a room with five people. Yep. Yep. Like if Elon wouldn't have went into the club that he went into and had that, he wouldn't have had an audience either. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like, I mean, like, you well, know, if he would have just went on and created his account and launched his first room, the welcome Elon Musk room, nobody would have showed up because <laughs> nobody would have known it was him and it was real. Mm -hmm. He had to coordinate a little bit. He had to put the pieces together. He had to go in the right club. He had to get the right audience, the right press behind it. Yeah. Bill Gates was on there last night. Same thing. Mm. He was I on last that. night at nine o'clock Eastern. I saw, uh, you know, one of the very first rooms I went to as well was uh, with Naval Ravikant was in yep. the room. And, uh, you know, we know his brother, Kamal, and they yep. were both in there along with some guys from Apple. And I, for a while, it was like 20 people in the room. I was like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, yep. and he's a guy that, you know, he'll never go on podcasts. He's only on Twitter. But he, he said straight up, this is my platform, Clubhouse. Yep. I know he's also an investor. So little bias probably, but the fact that he's saying that and he's talking about his perspective, I'm like, where else are you going to get this kind of brain, you know, like literally freely giving and you can ask him questions if you wished. Yeah. Yeah. The other night, that. like Billy Jean and Perry and a bunch of those guys were on stage. It was about 10 of them. They talked for four hours. Never once brought anyone up to the stage. There was 1500 people in the room listening. I mean, think about that. Like those fly on the wall conversations. It's what a podcast is. That's like right. the three of us, we're having this amazing conversation that we're both like high energy, super into, we're loving. Yeah. And at some point in time in the future, a lot of people are going to get to hear this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Clubhouse is. We could just have a conversation live and we could have a group of people listening right now live to whatever we're talking about. And they will stay because they're entertained. Mm -hmm. Just the same reason why they stay and listen to your podcast because they're entertained. Well, we should do a ding, ding room together on <laughs> podcasting sometime. And then yeah. You know, you should like, life. we're talking yeah. about doing some cool rooms. Like once I can get my schedule down, whenever yeah. new podcasts release, like bringing, like, imagine if the three of us, like you drop the podcast, we schedule it whatever week the podcast comes out yep. and we schedule a Q and a. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we thought. We haven't done it yet, but you might be the very first guy we hit up. For yeah, and, and happy to that. like, happy to do that. Happy to like, have you take that and do it with everyone. Like, why not? You're spending your time and effort and energy getting me on your podcast like why not do as much as you can to bring it all together and promote it and leverage it and and grow with it and you know all these great things that are that are here to come i, I it's smart for me it yeah. gets me a better use out of my time with you it gets you a better use out of your time with me mm -hmm. you know it's, it's like stuff yeah. yeah i was just talking to someone on an influencer marketing stage and they said you know that the smartest influencer companies they come to you and get the shout out but they they get you to pay they pay you for your content mm -hmm. that they own the rights to. Mm -hmm. So then, like, you know, this female shop or this male shop, East Bay, whatever it is, Under Armour, if they sent me a bunch of merchandise to post, they would actually own the rights to that post and imagery. Mm -hmm. So they could use me in any ad I wanted on their website. That's good for me too. I know there's rights in that if you're at a certain level as a model, I'm obviously not. <laughs> but if I'm shouted out on the, like one of the things I'm trying to play when my book comes out, I want to get shouted out on the GoDaddy website. Mm. Imagine me on the homepage of GoDaddy. Heck yeah. Like that would be huge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking at this and saying, okay, well now we've got a podcast with Gary Henderson or a podcast with Hal Elrod or a podcast with Lewis Howes. How can we use this at the different points in time? How can we use our relationship and bring in our, our best of and put together some epic stages in Clubhouse and bring in some of our friends that have been our very best episodes and push those again really big and bring those into Clubhouse and curate some really epic spaces that no one else can touch? Yeah, and so you have that because you have the access to all those guests and all those relationships there. Mm -hmm. You have a podcast family. Mm -hmm. That's it. Absolutely. And that's how we see it too, because we do keep connecting. I mean, what better way can we all share in this together and grow together? And it could be, I mean, any podcaster can do this also, obviously, yep. but this is so cool, man. 
Um, yeah, I want to talk real quickly before we wrap up about about your book. I'm yeah. um, I'm curious how to, how the deal came about. So you're you're publishing your book on Hay House. How did how did that all come about? How did they approach you, or did you approach them? What's the story there? Well, so I know Reed. I met Reed in Jeff Walker's mastermind. So Reed Tracy is the CEO of Hay House. And at the time I was having a beer with Reed and I said, Hey, have you ever thought about publishing a book on aromatherapy? And he said, well, we have, we're kind of looking for an author. And I said, I got the perfect author for you. And we just delivered. And then multiple clients of mine over the years have published with Hay House and we've always delivered for them. So I got the reputation with Reed as when Gary works on a book from a marketing side, he's going to deliver. So I got into Clubhouse. I, I got my account on the 24th. I got active on the 27th. On, I think the 9th of January, I sent Reed an email. I said, hey, Reed, hope you're doing well, buddy. I hadn't talked to you in a little while. I'd like to talk to you about this new app, Clubhouse. I think there needs to be a book on it. I'd like to talk to you about it. He wrote me back and he said, sure, Gary, let's get on a Zoom call. So I scheduled a 30-minute Zoom. No book proposal. No outline. I just looked dead in, the, like dead in the camera and said, there's this new app. It's really fire. I think it's going to be amazing. I think there needs to be a business book about it. It's underlying human psychology relationships because that's what Clubhouse is. Yes, it's social media, and I get that, but there's, there's another component here that's very unique, and we need to write a book about that. And he said, Gary Hayhouse would love to have a book about that, and we'd love for you to be the author. I said, well, that'd be cool. And, and we kind of just like ended the call there. And then I got an email back that I got a five-figure book advance. I didn't even know that <laughs> because I, I didn't care. Sure. Like, I just wanted to write. The, I, I know what a book does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I, I know the path when you write the book, and I know what I can do with this book. So I didn't care. I just needed the book published. I didn't want to self-publish. Nothing against self-publishing. There's, a, like, a lot of, lot of great things for self-publishing, but I didn't want to. Mm. Um, I had been very, very careful to not pigeonhole myself platform. Mm -hmm. But I believe I like I had some conversations with Pete from Mashable, the founder of Mashable, yeah. and he covered Twitter when it launched and he talked about the signals for Clubhouse are way stronger than Twitter. I don't think it's a bad platform to attach to right now. Mm. I got I got 10 years. I turned 40 this year. I turned 40 in July. Mm. I want to be done as much as I can by the time I'm 50. Yeah, man. So I think Clubhouse is going to be here for 10 years. I really do. Or something like a Clubhouse. I don't think Clubhouse is going to go anywhere. I think there's too many signals coming in. I think if everybody else goes and does something else, that's okay. I don't care if there's Twitter spaces. I don't care if Facebook copies or, or Instagram copies. I think Clubhouse is going to have its own space. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, tr a true group of people who love the fact that there's no video. And mm -hmm. it is truly drop in. And it is totally acceptable mm -hmm. to be at the beach or say, I got to mute you and flush my toilet yeah. or whatever you need to do. <laughs> it's acceptable. And when you start throwing in other components to it, it, and eliminates that accessibility mm. like video and stuff like that so i told reed i'd love to write it i am working with a team of writers and and we're moving fast we we approved our writer team we have a manuscript due on the 23rd of april 2021 and our goal is to have the book on the shelves the 12th of october 2021 and which is light super speed. light speed and my yeah. big goal I thought it was big. Everyone else tells me it's small. My big goal is to sell 50,000 books week one. Everyone else says, Gary, you'll sell way more than that. I have no, I've never done it before. I've never sold more than 25,000 week one for one of my clients. So uh -huh. to me, I'm like, I don't have the audience that my client had and I'm doubling it. That's a pretty big goal. Amen. But you know, I, I think there's a lot of momentum around Clubhouse right now. I think there's a lot of people that understand it. It is a business book about Clubhouse. It's building relationships. It's building connections. It's getting access on podcasts you would never get to, getting people to contribute and write for your blog, getting like, I got an ink feature. I was featured in Ink Magazine. It's literally a featured <laughs> article that published Clubhouse last too? week, all from Clubhouse. <laughs> wow. Now, I knew that I knew the writer, yeah. but he and I had, and he, he wrote the book Likeable. Um, uh -huh. His name's Dave. I don't know okay. if you know Dave. The book's got the big thumb on the front of it. He wrote yeah, a social media book years book. ago. Yeah. yeah. So I knew Dave. He and I, we've connected at conferences and stuff years ago. He started popping in the rooms and he starts reaching out to me now because I'm the guy on the stage with the 40,000 followers. He's the guy in the audience with 100 followers. I remember when Dave was the guy on the stage speaking at the conference and I was the guy in the audience. How trippy is that, man? So all I did was say, come on, Dave. And I opened my arms and said, let's go. Larry Kim. I don't know if you know Larry. He founded WordStream. If you don't know Larry Kim, you guys need to know Larry Kim. All right. right in the he, founded, <laughs> he founded WordStream. 
Have you ever heard of WordStream? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he founded that. That was his company. He sold it for $150 million. Ah, okay. He owned the company. Like, it was his. Jeez. He didn't have debt. It was his company. He's my age, so 39-ish. Um, he lives in Boston, and now his new company is Mobile Monkey, and he's competing with Minichat. Hmm. I've seen Mobile Monkey too. So yeah. Mobile Monkey is Mobile Monkey's Larry Kim, the unicorn strategy that was really popular on Facebook ads. That's his. He's brilliant. Well, Larry Kim did the same thing. He reached out to me. He spoke at my event back in 2013. He reached out to me and he said, Gary, I see you're really big on Clubhouse. Can you help me expand my audience on Clubhouse? Larry, man, I'd love to help you do that. You know what Larry did? Larry made sure that I was one of the first 50 people to apply to Instagram to get access to the bots. Mm-hmm. So now I have Instagram bots. You know what all my clients want? Instagram bots. You know what I'm doing for all my clients? All the ones that qualify? No. I'm just helping them get Instagram bots. Mm. Because Larry wants to bring key accounts on. So I own or have access to accounts with key influencers. I'm helping everyone out. You know what Larry's getting right now? About 10,000 emails opting in for MobileMonkey every single week organically. You know who's sending out an email for my book when it publishes? Larry Kim Larry. Mm. and he's already committed to be all in on publishing it like he says Gary I'll go all in for you so delayed gratification I'm not asking for anything right now I'm pushing it out I know where I'm going I know I have a book release I know I'm writing a book I want that book to impact a lot of people I did I sold 700 books for one of my clients in November of 2020 and we did $700,000 worth of revenue in 29 days off of 700 books sold I can only imagine the revenue that'll be made when I sell 50,000 books. Mm. And I didn't say if, I said when. It's when. No, it definitely is when. And I think it's going to be way quicker than, than everyone thinks and probably any other influencer you've worked for with. This is magical. I, I like it because it's timeless. You know, you can apply everything you're saying right now and remove Clubhouse and apply it to life. Mm-hmm. You know, Like what mastermind do I need to get in? What right. event do I need to go to? What, what stage? And in all honesty, if I would have taken the time and energy like, I'm like you, Instagram wasn't my platform. It is now because Clubhouse to Instagram, that path is really clear. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm doubling down. I've grown. I was at 2.3K followers at the start of this year. Right now, I'm at 15.6, mm-hmm. all organic, all from Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. So I've grown like 5X my Instagram following. But I was just like you. If I would have taken the same effort and energy, though, and put it into Instagram that I have Clubhouse, the same amount of hours, if I would have played all in on the platform the way the platform wanted me to play, the same way I'm playing on the platform, the way that Clubhouse wants me to play, I would have had the same success on Instagram. I was just lazy. <laughs> and it wasn't for me. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel comfortable. Like, I don't love my picture taken all the time. You don't right. want to do little selfies? Yeah. yeah like, I did, a, I, I, did, I did a Reels video, though. We, we're almost to top 4,000. I'm dancing. Me <laughs> and my wife and my two kids. It's on Instagram. It's on my Reels. It's my first one. And we're just getting ready to top 4,000 views on that. So I did do that. Yeah. And I'm going to do more of those. Yeah, but I would have never played all in if if it wasn't for Clubhouse, and I, I didn't know, find a platform TikTok's that I felt comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I'm gonna. I got no, the video. Don't. I'm gonna put it on TikTok. I, you know, well, you might as well. I well, guess. repurpose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you guys. Like, I went all in on. I have a fan club. I've never had a fan club. I've done over twenty thousand dollars in revenue and people joining my fan club so far this year. Jeez. Wow. I've never We're recording I, this in February, just for reference. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and and I haven't sold it. Basically, like I did twenty thousand the first thirty days of the year because I did a test. Mm -hmm. So I I said, can I get people to pay $500 to join my fan club? Well, hot damn, I can. (laughs) Like, sure. It's it's wild to me. Like people are like, do you have merch? Do you have this? Do you have this? I can get some merch. Like Damon John speaking team. I got the the logo. I got my own logo. It's all set. It's Gary club. It it looks like a nightclub. It's amazing. Like Damon John's team reached out and they're like, can we sign you to our speaker bureau? Wow. And I'm like, well, let me, let me breathe for a minute. And then <laughs> no, because I'm going to write a book and my speaker fees are going to go way up. So let's not sign anything yet. Let me get the book done. Yeah. Let's, let's talk in November. Or so, huh? <laughs> yeah. Let's delay, <laughs> delayed gratification. I can't sure. really speak anywhere right now. Anyway, mm, there's a global pandemic. True. Why would mm. you want to? I mean, right. There's a global <laughs> pandemic and I've got 1500 people live on clubhouse at any point in time. I want to talk. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. So I'll delay it. And then when my book comes out and I sell 50,000 copies and I'm one of the most requested keynote speakers, then I can put my feet out. Mm. Do you know what the title of the book's going to be yet? And I if you no do, clue. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I have no you clue. Did, you might not even be able to tell us anyway. So <laughs> I, I wish I did. I have no clue. They asked me, um, the Hay House team, they said, Gary, what's the title of the book? I said, will you tell me when you figure it out? <laughs> I suck at titling stuff. I um, just love the way you approach all of these things. <laughs> You're not doing a damn book and get all these different things that a traditional, you know, author would do with the publisher, uh, speaker. I mean, everything is just completely. I'm a marketer. You're, mm -hmm. Yeah, you are. I'm a marketer. I market. So do I need to write a book? Sure. I'm going to, it's my audio and I have a team and they're going to do it all and it'll all be laid down. I have hours of audio that I got to put down for them, but I'm a marketer. Mm. My job is to sell books. That's an author's job is to sell books. It's not, it's not an author's job to write the book. It's an author's job to sell the book. Reed Tracy taught me, you know what the best way, and he taught me this years ago, the best way to get someone to buy your book is to get someone to read your book. Mm. What am I doing? I'm extending my book digitally because I want people reading my book. I want, I don't want to sell 50,000 copies. My big goal is a million copies. I want it translated. Like I'm in, I welcome 700 people. I spoke Chinese the other day on clubhouse. <laughs> no joke. I said, welcome and happy new year because it was Chinese new year. Yeah. And I was taught by people on stage, how to speak Chinese. I spoke Chinese to 700 people. You know why? Because my book will get translated to Chinese. Damn I want boy. them to buy my book in Chinese. Yeah, because I know where it goes. I know who it'll help. I know where it'll position me. Mm. I'm a marketer. That's that's yeah. what I am. It's what I do. It's what I've done for every one of my clients. I'm just now going to write a book in the process. Yeah, a smart marketer at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're not just a marketer. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you're I doing like things that uh, ninety percent of marketers probably wouldn't <laughs> do. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you have a plan. That's the thing. It's not like you're just haphazardly doing this. But I like the fact that you're framing things seems like a consistent thing maybe is this is a test i'm going to run this test for this specific period of time to others it might seem like gary's always living on clubhouse what the hell is he doing with his life oh guess what he's got a plan he's no he's playing the time zone thing like you said there's a plan behind the man well they all perked up whenever i got to announce my book deal mm -hmm. because everybody else was thinking about maybe i should write a book i went and got the book deal mm -hmm. but i had the plan i didn't i, I what did i pitch I didn't pitch I had the biggest following. All I pitched was to my friend Reed that I had a relationship with. I said, I should write your business book. He knows I'm a marketer. He knows what I can do. He's been in the same room with me many times. Who better to write? I've never asked him to write a book. It's trust. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, who better? Well, I didn't need to go to him and say, I have the biggest following on Clubhouse. All I needed to say was, I know how to write the book on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. He said, sure you do, Gary. Mm -hmm. So my friends got way bigger followings, but I had to shift for a minute. And I had to go and make sure my book was ready. And I got my book deal because Clubhouse isn't going away in March or April or May. I don't need to sprint right now. It's a marathon. And when the book hits the shelves in October, I'll be in my own little way like the, the poet that did the, the reading at the inauguration. I will have so much traffic from outside of Clubhouse coming in looking for me because I wrote the business book in Clubhouse. So now my, my angle is switched. Who do I partner with? Who can help me reach my goal of selling 50,000 books? Mm. Who can I go serve right now? How can I deposit so much money into the bank for all of these people in such a big way that when I come back with a little ask, then they would love to promote my book. So that's what I do now man. every day. This is infectious. It's pumping me up. I want to get on Clubhouse. I'm just <laughs> tearing it up right now. Got a podcast, man. <laughs> but you're right, man. I mean, we're it's it's really exciting because we have a brand we're actually about to release time of this recording next week, and it's all around podcasting. Podhacker is the name. And oh, very cool. Our goal is to you know go Clubhouse, go strong on Clubhouse. We've already done it kind of haphazardly, but now with that as a plan to funnel into something like that or some other stuff. I mean. There's no better way right now to, I think, put a brand newly out into the world like that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. Clubhouse is a perfect opportunity to go do that. Yeah, brother. For sure. Well, uh, wrapping up here, is there is there anywhere else you want people to go check out? The book's coming out in October. Gary.club, is is that the fan club? Yeah, that's um, the best place to get access to me. You know, Our, our corporate yeah. website is digitalmarketing.org. We write a lot about digital marketing. We rank for pretty much anything to do with influencer <laughs> marketing, personality brands, stuff like that. That's a ton of free content. Direct access to me is at gary.club. Sweet. And get the, uh, I know you have a clubhouse guide that's super helpful too. I think yeah. it's at gary.club. So yeah, get your hands yeah. on that. Most definitely. All right, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you.
Oh, most definitely. Thank you guys very much.